Hey everyone, my name's Kelvin and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial for Procreate. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint this super simple rabbit illustration. I think this project in particular is a great one for beginners and advanced painters alike. And the reason is because uh, there are a few challenges we have when we're painting a white illustration on a white background. And also there's a few other challenges we have when we make this sort of black circle background. And hopefully this video can make a good example and uh, explain how to do both of those things. So I've already got a watercolor paper texture loaded into Procreate. And in this case, I'm using the Forester paper texture. And for the brushes, I'm gonna be able to do all of this with the regular watercolor brush kit. And as usual, I'll put links to all the textures and brushes I use in the description below. Now, as you can see, I've already got my rabbit sketch uh, placed in there. And uh, as usual, you guys can have this sketch for free. I'll put a download in the description. And I've just placed it in the document here as the very top layer. Then I set the transparency mode to multiply. And that's just to prevent it from covering up what we're gonna paint because from now on, we're gonna be painting on a blank layer underneath the paper texture, just like you normally would. The first thing we're gonna do is lay down the base coat for the body of the rabbit. Since this is a white rabbit, if we just paint white, it won't really show up. So I recommend using a kind of a very light gray color, I think something like that. And then also, if your gray does have a little bit of color in it, I recommend dragging it over here to a kind of a cool tone. Then for the brush, I'm gonna use the abstract round then at a pretty large size, I guess the maximum size, I'm just gonna very roughly uh, fill out the outline of this rabbit. Now this is obviously a gray color, not white, uh, but it's okay for now because we can actually change that very easily later on. Uh, next, I'm gonna add some of the uh, darker details on this rabbit. So basically if I grab the selection tool, and set it to freehand, I can add some, I guess they're sort of just like darker areas in the pattern. Not all rabbits have this, but I think it does look very good in this case. So for example, on the ears, I'll do add. So I've circled both ears. I've made that kind of a selection. I'll feather out both of those selections at the same time. Then I can go to hue, saturation, and brightness for the layer, and I'll just darken that area. And that's just because I want the ends of those ears to be dark. And I'm also gonna go through and do the same thing to the hands, the feet, and the tail. Next, I'm gonna go in there and add some shadows and that'll make this rabbit kind of a little more three-dimensional. And I'm gonna do that with the selection tool. Basically the same thing, set to freehand, but this time I won't feather it out. So for example, I'm gonna do a shadow under the chin here. So I'll make a selection that just follows the bottom, circles back and then reconnects. I'll go to hue, saturation and brightness and I'll just darken that a little bit. And I'm gonna go through this and add shadows basically uh, wherever it looks like it needs a shadow. So under the arms, on the tail, uh, behind the ear there, maybe under uh, this ear. Next, I'm gonna grab the water blender brush, uh, the one at the bottom here, and at kind of a medium small size, I'm just gonna go in there and uh, soften up the soft edge of the shadow. So for example, under here, I'll just blur it like that. I'll blur this one over here and I'll just go through and just soften it wherever I think it needs to be a little bit smoother. So there we go, the shadows are all done and uh, this looks really nice. I just need to sort of cut back my wash so it fits the silhouette of the rabbit. So I'm gonna grab the eraser brush and I'm gonna set that to the fine liner pen and at a really small size, maybe like 10, eight or 10%, I'm just gonna go around the body of the rabbit and basically cut it out uh, following the sketch. Now once the silhouette of the rabbit is totally cut out, I just need to kind of select and delete all the extra watercolor around the edges. And you could of course just go in there and erase it by hand, but I think that takes way too long. So there's a quick time-saving trick you can do. So I'm gonna grab the selection tool, set it to automatic, and I'm just gonna make a selection on the body of the rabbit. So I'm gonna click and drag, and I'll set the threshold just so it totally fills out the uh, silhouette there. So there we go, this looks good, about 50% uh, threshold. After that, I'm gonna go here to invert. Now before we selected the rabbit, and when I uh, selected invert, it basically selected everything but the rabbit. So then I can open the layers panel, just tap on the uh, layer there with the rabbit and click clear, and it will clear everything that's not the rabbit. 
Next, I can move on and do some of the other details. So I'll move on and do the ears. So I'm gonna do that on a different layer. So I'll make a new layer above everything. I'm gonna select a kind of pink color. Then using the fine liner pen brush, I'll just fill out the ear real quick. And uh, it's optional, but you can also kind of uh, add a little bit of a rosy cheek like this. Just depends on the style of your illustration, but uh, I like the way it looks. Next, I'm gonna grab the water blender brush and at maybe around 10 or 20%, I'll really, really soften the area on the cheek here just to make it uh, more transparent. And uh, I won't mess with the ear in this area. I just wanna kind of blur that transition. So I'll just work it back and forth to make it a little bit softer. The next step here is also optional. I just wanna add a sort of a highlight in the ear to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. So I'm gonna do that with the selection tool set to freehand. I'll make a selection just like this. I'll feather it out just until it meets the edge there. Then I'm gonna go to the hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll just brighten that selection basically until it starts becoming kind of whitish. And I'll also desaturate it a little bit. And this is just gonna give it sort of an ombre kind of fade, uh, and that makes the ear look curved. Next, I'm gonna make a new layer, and I'm gonna do the uh, face details. And it's really easy. I'm just gonna do the eye with pure black, maybe a lighter brown color for the other uh, details like the mouth, these kind of dots here and then the whiskers. And I'm gonna use the fine liner pen brush for all of that. So this one is coming along uh, really nicely. I think it looks really good. I think now's a great time to sort of fix the uh, issue with the gray. So originally this is supposed to be a white rabbit, but we painted it in gray just so we can see it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna use the curves tool to sort of fix this and make it look more white. So to do that, I'll open the layers panel. I'm gonna select the uh, layer that has the silhouette of the rabbit. Then I'm gonna to go to my curves tool for the layer. And I'm gonna introduce something called an S curve. If you've ever used Photoshop or any other kind of uh, graphic or image editing program, uh, this is basically the same as raising or lowering the contrast. So to make an S curve, I'm just gonna select about here and raise that and then about here and lower it. And that's why they call it an S-curve because it has this kind of uh, shape to it. Now I'm gonna adjust these two nodes here uh, and just set it to a point where the rabbit looks white, uh, but not so white that it's like disappearing like that. I think I'll set it about like this. So there we go, that looks really good. We've got a very light gray on the highlights and then sort of the rest of the details and the shadows are just a very slightly darker version of that gray. And I'll just deselect it to apply those changes and now we can move on and do the outlines. So to do the outlines, I'll make a new layer and I'm gonna drag it to the very top here, still under the paper texture, but just above all the other layers of the rabbit. And I'm gonna select a sort of medium gray color and I'm gonna do all the outlines with the fine liner pen set to a pretty small size, maybe like nine or 10%. And I'm not gonna do a smooth outline like this. Uh, what I wanna do is basically because the rabbit is fuzzy, I'm gonna do this kind of dashed outline just like this. And I'm just gonna follow the whole outline of the sketch, just sort of adding this wherever I think the uh, contrast needs a little bit of help. Since this is a white rabbit, it pretty much needs this outline almost everywhere. So I think the outlines turned out really nicely. Uh, but I did discover a couple of tricks. I guess I had to go really carefully around the profile of the face, just because if I did sort of rough outline, it made the face look kind of weird. So I did them very light and smooth. And then on the feet, I did them kind of very rough because I wanted the feet, uh, the fur on the feet to look a little bit shaggy. Uh, so this does kind of help with that effect. And then just here and there, I did these kind of dashed lines just to kind of uh, give the effect of like a grain of the fur or something like that. And next I can kind of adjust the uh, strength of these outlines. So I'll open the layers panel and uh, here's the one with the outlines. I'm gonna set the transparency to multiply. I'll lower it to zero. Then I'll just slowly raise it back up just until the outlines are barely visible. So maybe around 20% uh, looks really good in this case. Now this, I think this kind of illustration requires a two step outline. So these are the uh, main outlines, the very light ones. Next I'll make a new layer basically using the same brush, same color. I'm gonna go over it again for a second layer of outlines, but I'm gonna do it much more sparingly this time. And 
and I'll do kind of a similar thing that I did with the other outline. I'll adjust the transparency, so I'll set it to multiply, lower it to zero, and then raise it back up. But uh, I'm gonna keep in mind that I want this to be quite a bit darker than the other outlines. So maybe this time I'll set it around 60%. I think that looks pretty good. So at this point, the rabbit is basically done. And uh, if all you wanna paint is a white rabbit, uh, here's what it would look like if I printed this out. Now, obviously there's a little bit of a contrast issue because we're dealing with a white rabbit, obviously on white paper. Uh, generally, printers struggle with very light, uh, subtle shades of gray, uh, but I think this one printed out reasonably well. Now, if you want to add this black background, uh, that's what I'll cover next. So just to keep this simple, I'll go ahead and merge all the layers uh, from the rabbit together, just to kind of keep this a little bit easier to work with. And I'm gonna do the background on a new layer. I'm gonna place it underneath the rabbit and just for now, just because the rabbit is a little bit uh, distracting, I'll just switch that off and we'll zoom out here. And I'm gonna select a black color and just using the abstract round uh, and maybe some of these other brushes like the mist or the stippling, I'll just create a kind of random abstract uh, black wash texture. So to get this kind of splattery effect, I was just using the mist brush and I could just select uh, different shades of white or black and just tap it around. And it just kind of automatically gives this kind of, it's almost like paint flicks or kind of like gravel or something like that. Next, I'm gonna use the selection tool to cut this into a circle. So I'm gonna grab the selection tool and set it to ellipse. And I'll just click and drag out here from the corner and just make this sort of circle just over whatever area kind of looks interesting. I think that looks pretty good. Then I'm gonna to go to invert. And just like what we did before, I can select that layer or just tap on it and go to clear. And it will just clear everything we didn't select. Uh, just again, it's just a time saving trick. Now the edges of this do look a little bit kind of laser sharp. So it's optional, but I recommend going over it with the eraser brush, just set to the fine liner pen, maybe around 20%. Just follow the edge and just sort of rough it up a little bit. So once the uh, black background is finished, you can go ahead and turn the rabbit layer back on. And right away, there is a kind of a transparency issue where the black background is showing through the rabbit. And we'll fix that in a minute. Uh, now is a good time to grab the arrow tool and just move the rabbit around and just position it wherever it sort of fits uh, and looks nice on this black background. And to fix the transparency issue, we're gonna use the white background trick that I've covered in uh, quite a few of my previous videos, but it's really simple, so I'll cover it again here. So if I open the layers panel, uh, here's the layer with the rabbit. I'm gonna duplicate it and I'll turn off the duplicate and I'm gonna go ahead and select the original one, the one below it. Then I'm gonna go to my hue saturation and uh, brightness adjustment. I'll raise the brightness to 100% and it basically makes a pure white version of that rabbit. And if I duplicate that white version, you can see uh, the more copies I make, the more opaque it gets. Uh, you don't wanna create too many copies or it'll have some, some other issues. I think three is enough. So after you make three, you can just turn on the original rabbit, the one that still has all the color, and you can see the transparency issue is fixed. And that's because these three uh, pure white versions of the rabbit are sort of blocking out the uh, black background down here. So just to keep this simple, I'll just pinch together all the rabbit layers, and we're left with just this one uh, very, very opaque white rabbit. Now this one looks really good as it is, but I think I wanna add some floral details kind of on the uh, black background. So I'm gonna make a new layer. I'll place it above everything. And I'm just gonna use the fine liner pen uh, in a couple of different shades, different colors here, and just paint some really simple floral elements uh, in the background. And there we go, this one is all done. And here's what it looks like when I print it out. So in the first part of this video, we painted the rabbit and uh, we used the same kind of process I use in pretty much all of my animal related watercolor tutorials. The main difference being we had to use the curves tool to turn the gray rabbit into a white rabbit. 
Now the last part of this video is doing the black background. I don't think I've covered it quite in this way in any of my previous videos, but I'm discovering more and more that uh, adding any kind of background to my standalone kind of isolated illustrations makes them look sort of more complete. Uh, it may be more suitable for something like a poster or maybe a greeting card or something like that. I'm still experimenting with it, but it's definitely improving my uh, artwork. And that pretty much wraps it up. But uh, as always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.